Bro, you're the nicest UFC <laughs> fighter in the world, dude. Shout out Basement Talk, man. But I'm gonna buy at least two of your ears off. <laughs> I make more than a million dollars in a day sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you better buy <laughs> First of all, I'm super fucking proud of you guys oh, for, for bouncing it. back. We did a podcast. I don't remember what we talked about, but <laughs> Kobe said it was dope. And, and uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out. But if you fuck it up this time, you guys all owe me 100 burpees. All right? Yeah. Yes, I will sir. owe you no, dude. 100. We cannot fuck anything. this up. <laughs> we cannot yeah. mess this up. And you up. can't stop. It's got to be like a straight 100. Straight 100? Yeah. Is that really okay. hard to do? Yeah. Yeah. You have Fuck. never done burpees so, before? No, I have. You guys, you guys cool with that? Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. That's yeah, and I'll, and I'll still table. come back. If it doesn't work out, <laughs> if it doesn't work again, we'll do like 200 burpees. We'll just keep up. And <laughs> if we don't get more <laughs> than 10 likes, right. we're doing 100 burpees. Because usually burpees put fear in people. So yeah. if I really want to get something out of someone. <laughs> That's how you do it? Yeah. Put the burpees Man, out. Because like, like, all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, I don't want to do no fucking burpees. So I like that. You should like try that. to do it anyway. I'm kind of down. We Maybe might, we might have to run some burpees. Call, at, yeah. I'll go 100 burpees. I'm not doing it. We'll go at least 20 after the pod. I think I think I owe you it anyway. No. I'll do it anyway. After oh, the pod, 100 okay, burpees. Deal. I mean, if we're not you fucking this that, recording up. You put it I'm on. not going to stop you, but. You, you don't want to sweat through that nice sweater, bro. That. Dude, like, no. tarp's coming off, you know? <laughs> tarp's so. coming off. Watch out, Todd. <laughs> you just got back it's, from it, Cabo. It, it'll be rough, though. I'll, I'll tell you that. Really? Yeah, 100 burpees. Burpees is like, like you unless you've been doing them like all the time in your training. So when Todd yeah, I, says. I'll give you 20. No, but when Todd says like he's going to make you do burpees, he will. Because I just saw on Instagram you made the kid. He ruined your order at like Wahoo's. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you sent that to me. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> Some <laughs> kid ruined his order at Wahoo's and oh, did he, he made work the there? worker do burpees. <laughs> no way. Wait, what? <laughs> Look, I go to Wahoo's like every single day and I've been going for like 25 years. And like I'm going to this one and the, I, I was there on his first day. And he was like super nervous taking my order. Oh, shoot. And then like a few weeks later, he looks a little more settled into his job. And then, you know, and I just keep coming in and ordering <laughs> the same thing. And he keeps asking me. And so I'm like, yo, like next time, if you don't remember my order, you owe me 20 burpees. Deal? <laughs> He's like, okay. And <laughs> no way. I'm like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be back. You know it. And so... You know, it took a couple of weeks before I went in and he was actually working oh. and I kind of caught him off guard and, but he oh, kind of no. seemed like he was ready, but, uh, he fucked it up. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> What's your order? Citrus so bowl or what? I get an outer reef burrito with no rice and I don't get the, the guacamole and uh, sour cream. Yeah. I get chips and salsa, but no salsa. I only like the pico de gallo mm. and I get a a drink and Damn. that's it that's it it's not that hard dude yeah no, no. I mean, <laughs> no but bless this kid he's good sport yeah he did it and he didn't even hesitate he's like yeah all right and he did him right there <laughs> inside behind the register yeah and that then, video like, is so funny i i said look all right next time it's like double or nothing oh shoot 40 <laughs> yeah, <he> did. <laughs> i came back he fucked up again <laughs> no barely it, barely yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so then he popped down and did like forty burpees. It was <laughs> like it was barely, funny. like he missed like the yeah, no he, rice or he, something. No, he said like. <laughs> so I always get a drink, and for some reason he's like outer reef burrito, no rice. He's like chips, pico de gallo, and he's like, and sometimes a drink, sometimes not. And I'm like, no, dude, I always get a drink. <laughs> he was so close. And he's like, fuck. He was I'm so like, close. Let's go. Hey, all the Wahoos people out there are getting fit, though. Now, dude. the guy got a job somewhere else, so he's no longer there. I don't know if I had anything to do with it. For but sure, <laughs> dude. For sure. <laughs> you that you should find out where like, he works. Like, fuck this yeah. trainer coming in here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, hey, well, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do 100, dude. I'm going to go for it. I all right. Bet. After. I think I just owe you it anyway. So. I don't yeah. think me and Kobe are going to agree to the yeah, same I'm thing. Not, but yeah. Yeah. I'll do like four. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to do as many as we can. Yeah, okay. That's, we'll I didn't messages. work out today anyway, so like we'll go for it. You but, need to get it in. So just so you know, my burpees, you have to hit your chest and hips to the ground to count. Hips too? Chest and hips. Like your whole body has to hit the ground and then you got to pop up and jump. So you can't just like kick your feet out and do like a plank yeah. and hop back. Oh, shoot. And it's not a little push oh, up. You got to like hit chest and hips to the ground, pop up, jump. So just so you know, those are the only ones that count. I used to always hit that little cheat pop in baseball. 
I used to just <laughs> pop off the ground, never touch the ground. Hope coach not watching. Oh, fuck. Well, we're going to try. So yeah, I would do like it. when I'd be training a football team like Jay Sarah or something and, you know, kids fucking around or something. <laughs> like, all right, everyone jogging place. We're doing 20 burpees, chest and hips to the ground. You know, there's always like, you know, one kid that's like, you get to 16, he doesn't hit his chest and hips, like back to the start. <laughs> you know, yeah. Oh, that was totally it's me. true. Your b- workouts are, they're crazy. It yeah. feels good sitting next to you <laughs> without like working out. But every time I see you, I throw up. Yeah. You're not it's alone. crazy. When was the last time you <clears throat> trained with Todd, Cobb? It's been like a long time. Yeah. A long time. Five, you were like six, back in the soccer yeah, days. I was, I was, yeah. It's like eight years now, seven, eight years now. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. I know. Wow. Trained but a lot of people since then. With the yeah, but we did was, all sorts of it stuff. It was long we enough did. to go that I beat him in a race. I know that. And your dad filmed it. <laughs> I bet you could still beat him. <laughs> so we have a witness. Yeah, you probably yeah, still can. I probably be can fast. now just by sure fact that like I work out and yeah. I'm not sure if you do. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> I didn't have to <laughs> Dude, Dude, I, joke I, this pod. I, I'm not saying that by hey, physical I, appearance, <laughs> but it just sounds like, you know, it sounds like you're not really will, <laughs> willing to do any burpees. So I'm guessing you haven't hit the gym lately, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> no, you're not wrong. <laughs> Actually, hey, no, he did, he did, no, he I did get in shape. He went hard before Cabo. He, yeah. he did get pretty fit. Kobe's been grinding the stair stepper, you know. Okay. He's been, he's been I've been running, out. doing stair stepper. Get a little cardio going. Hard. That's a good Not start. Not Todd Norman training. No. Well, but yeah, you're going to have to level up for that. I know. Yeah, we're going to have to get to a Soon. different level. When we get our warehouse. Yeah, that yeah. that is true. But I was going to say, yeah. is it true like it's better to walk than run when burning fat? That just popped up in my head. I'm curious. Yeah, so, yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many like controversies in fitness and and weight loss and stuff. And so it is true that if you're exercising at a lower intensity, you're utilizing fat to, you know, metabolize energy. Yeah. But you're not burning as many calories as fast. So Mm -hmm. if you want to burn more calories quicker, you got to go harder. So it's kind of like a car. Like you put gas in the tank. If you drive slow, you're going to, you know, burn less fuel, um, but it's going to take you longer to get there. Mm. If you go faster, you'll probably you, you burn the same amount of fuel, but you're going to get there quicker. So it's like, do you want it to take an hour or do you want it to mm. take 20 minutes? And that comes into, you know, the programming of someone's training. So some people don't really have the capacity to push it like 80, 85% for 30 minutes, 45 minutes on an elliptical. Um, or maybe it's a recovery day and you're not really trying to stress their cardiovascular system too much or their muscles and, and give them more strain. So you want them to exercise at a lower level. Um, but if I need to get fat off people, unless they're walking like two hours every day or doing a light jog, it takes a long time to do that. Um, it's less risk for injury. I usually will try to you know, also for fitness. So if you want to improve your VO2 max and your cardiovascular system, you, you, you got to push it. It's just like muscles. Like they're not going to grow and get too much stronger and bigger unless you push them past what they can handle. So, you know, if you're doing zone two cardio training all the time, that's just very low level, like 65% or so, 60, mm-hmm. 65% um, max effort. Um, it's safe and it burns fat. But if you took it up to like 75, 80, 85 percent or you did intervals, a lot of times I'll prescribe people intervals. I go two minutes hard at 85 and two minutes, you know, moderate at 70 and then back to two minutes at 85. And that would be like an interval conditioning day. And then maybe another day it could be more recovery where I'm like, yeah, you're going to hit that zone two steady state, just kind of recover, but burn calories. So, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. But like if you want to get fit and you want to burn calories quicker, you got to go harder. If you want to be safe and you want to just like, uh, you know, not overstress your body, you know, the lower intensity cardio will burn fat. But, you know, I haven't really had anybody lose a lot of weight really quickly just going at 65 percent walking on a treadmill. (laughs) You know, and I I get people all the time like, yeah, I walk every day and I do this hike and whatnot. And they're still like 30 percent fat. And I'm like, (laughs) it's not working for you. (laughs) No. You know, like. So yeah, it's it's controversial. The concept's true as far as energetics. Yes. Just sitting here, we are uh, breathing in oxygen. We are in aerobic 
uh, metabolism right now. We are breathing in oxygen, it goes into our body and it metabolizes body fat to produce energy. And most of our life, this is how we're going to operate because mm-hmm. you're not out there running around all the time, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're like a professional soccer player, well, sure, you're running around a lot more. But most of us, you know, we get most of our energy through aerobic training, aerobic metabolism. Once you start moving and going faster, your body starts breaking down sugars, carbohydrates. It starts producing energy quicker. Mm-hmm. So like as soon as you start moving and going hard, aerobic metabolism doesn't produce enough energy quick enough to support the energy that you need to perform at what you're trying to do, especially if you're going to try and do like an all out sprint. Man, so, you're, you're, you got a, you got, you're so smart with this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it comes down to energetics. Notes, no, I know. Energetics <laughs> is like, I'll say the key principle that I operate off of when it comes to fitness training, weight loss, performance, conditioning, you got to understand energetics and how those three energy systems work. Your, your, ATP stored phosphogen, phosphogen system, your glycolytic system, and Never your aerobic heard these system. Words. Yeah, this is <laughs> pretty basic exercise science, but right. um, it is very comp- complex when you get down into like the actual processes in your body and how it actually converts energy into what's or converts certain substrates into what's called ATP, which is the energy molecule. Yeah, and so. Um, you know, if I'm working with an explosive athlete, a sprinter, a fast twitch athlete, and I'm doing too much aerobic training with them, that can actually inhibit and take away from some of their strength and power. Cause now you're training a different system. You know what I'm saying? Cause there's, there's more athletes too, with more fast twitch muscles than not, than not. Right. Is that true too? Well, it depends on the sport and it depends on the position in the sport. Mm. So like football, you have linemen who uh, you know, some of them aren't as fast, but they're big, right? Yes. And they can apply force and block. Now, obviously, as you go up the food chain in football, like the NFL guys, yeah, they're all fast twitch from That'd the lineman quick. to the quarterback to the punter. You know, they, they have explosive uh, fast twitch, higher percentage of fast twitch muscle fibers. They, they are naturally strong and powerful and quicker. But most of the kids that come out, um, don't have, you know, the genetics that, you know, make them an NFL athlete. You know, it's a very rare breed or even a professional baseball player, whatever it is. Um, but we're all born with certain, uh, you know, genotype or fiber type. You know, some of us have more slow twitch muscle fibers Kobe. and, <laughs> and we're better at endurance and dude i can beat both of you in a race that's bullshit you and Todd let's do that combine i'll actually. beat you after the 100 burpees you guys might have to have like a little basement talk combine or something yeah good idea a little basement talk fitness combine should we do, do todd should we do one yeah maybe i'm down for <laughs> whoever it. pukes first loses <laughs> i'm down to do that <laughs> <laughs> you too <laughs> that'll be good but uh yeah um so if you have a higher percentage of slow twitch muscle fibers you're never going to be a sprinter, no matter how well I train you. Really? I can make you faster and more athletic, but you're never going to be like a wide receiver mm-hmm. in a, on a football team. You're probably going to be more like a lineman or, you know, maybe, you know, some quarterbacks aren't, aren't that fast, you know, a.k.a. Tom Brady, but, but they are super skilled and they have amazing talent. Make up for I was going to say, I've seen, I seen someone talk about Conor McGregor where they're like, the reason why he gasses so quick is because he has crazy fast twitch muscles. That's why he's knocking people out first, second round. You know, there's and you're born with it, right? Like yeah. you're kind of saying some so people have more than others. If you have a, a higher percentage of fast twitch fibers, you're going to respond better to strength and power training. So there's kids like in high school, I'll be training like I'm football and they have higher percentage of fast twitch fibers. They're the fast kids. You know it. And they'll get in the squat rack and do like 315 for 10 reps. And, the, and they're the kids like missing workouts and not showing up, but they naturally just have it. And then you'll have the other kid that's dedicated in there all the time, but he doesn't have quite the genetic makeup. And he, he can only do 250 for 10 and he's been never missed a workout. Um, <clears throat> both of them can get stronger. Both of them uh, can improve. But your threshold is 
dependent on your genetics. Yeah. And if you are a, a fast twitch athlete, you're not built for endurance. You don't have as yeah. much mitochondria in your muscle cells, and that's where your body oxidizes energy. And um, and if you don't have that, you know, now Conor McGregor can certainly get in the best shape he can, and he can improve his fitness to a certain level. But if he's to go against a fighter that has a really high aerobic genetic makeup, that person's going to have an advantage in in the endurance. You know, he won't have the advantage in the quickness and explosion. But um, so that's that's a thing that makes sports really interesting to me and even fighters because, um, you know, everybody's predisposed to having certain <clears throat> strengths and weaknesses. And you got to maximize your strengths. You also need to try and maximize your weaknesses. And when you're fighting someone in a UFC <clears throat> fight, you know, they might be a great striker. They might have, you know, really good strength and power, but they don't have a lot of gas. So if you can outwork them and dodge his shots maybe you get them to the point where they can't react as fast because they're too tired yeah so it definitely is a, a strategy is would, their fitness would you say then hard work doesn't beat talent then in that scenario Ooh. um whoa so i, know, I mean it's controversial yeah Damn. i mean I, I would never say hard work doesn't beat talent but there's definitely a lot of talent that has beaten hard work mm -hmm. yeah um but i don't think that sustains usually the the people that have a lot of talent and they don't work hard and they're not dedicated they'll get away with it to a certain point <clears throat> they but at out. a certain point you're with a lot of talent and everyone's talented and if you're not working as hard as them or harder you'll get exposed about the sean level. o'malley and cheeto vera did yeah. you watch that fight i didn't i probably should have but so yeah I'm, that's a, that's a kind of an example of that i feel like because they probably you know, Cheeto, I, Cheeto I've, was like the hardest worker in yeah, the UFC, I'd hardest say. Hardest worker, but then you have someone like Sean who's just He's a, a freak. different animal. Stylistically, yeah. just picked him apart. Yeah. But was, <clears throat> yeah. we know, like, I've known you since I was 15, 14, 15. We've all known you. Um, but for the viewers that, like, don't know who you are, right. um, like, where did you start your love for, like, training and sports? And where did you start? Where, where were you born like to go way back yeah i mean i was born in thousand oaks i thought um, you were gonna say a gym no i'm just kidding <laughs> i might born have been in the born gym. in a gym yeah. I, sometimes i feel like it yeah it's where i've lived pretty much my whole life yeah. um yeah i was born in thousand oaks a little bit north of la cool. uh just just past calabasas and um mm -hmm. i grew up my parents got divorced when i was like two and a half and they battled hard like throughout their whole my whole childhood and custody battles and all that kind of stuff. So um, I had two older brothers and, and sports was kind of like our thing. And we, you know, had a lot of, you know, coaches, whether it was a track coach, soccer coach, baseball coach, the other ones like taking us to practices and and looking out for us and, and looking out for me. Um, and then, uh, you know, I was always pretty successful in sports. I, you know, played soccer when I was younger, baseball and track and, um, my mom didn't let me play football until I think I was in eighth grade, seventh or eighth grade. But uh, yeah, I, the first time I worked out, I was like 12 years old, you know, and, and there was uh, what gym? What, what, what? Well, at this point, I moved to Orange County because okay. my dad lived in Orange County and I ended up coming up here, uh, you know, on visitation and stuff. And there was a Jack Lanes on in El Toro. Jack uh, Lanes. I think we're all three too young for that. Yeah, one. Jack Lane. <laughs> he's like the fitness guru that was like you know the legend and mm. um did he make any of those like vhs like training tapes or anything oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah jack i mean he has like the juicer thing and yeah. all that stuff and Wait, the juicer thing what is yeah, that i don't know he he was big he had like this infomercial for making like fresh juice oh, okay. and he made like the, he was to get ripped guy. right fitness, now okay okay <laughs> yeah like, he was this the, guy he was like was, the bradley marn back then or something right i mean this guy was like a major <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can I take off my jacket? I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Feel free. Um, the AC I'm sorry, cuts out dude. after a certain time here. Bradley Martin, dude, is all juice stuff. Could you imagine Bradley Martin on an infomercial doing like aerobics? <laughs> oh he's 260, though. Yeah, he's yeah, 260. Yeah, he's dude. Like, <laughs> chill. So I, I went into Jack Lane's and I was working out, you know, with my dad. Yeah. And also, like, my older brothers used to beat up on me all the time. How and, many like, brothers did you have? Two. Two, yeah. Two, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I was the youngest and, um, you know, they beat up on me, their friends would beat up on me and like that whole situation. So um, as I started getting older, like in high school, like we were all big into sports and I wanted to be a football player. My dream was to play pro football. 
So I, you know, I, I was very serious about my training in high school. Um, and, but I really got into training after high school when I was, uh, I was, uh, going to Saddleback college. Mm. So shout um, out to Gauchos. Yeah. I, had a, I made a frat over there. Yeah. I didn't know. You made a frat. Yeah. yeah. It's just me and Kyler, but <laughs> yeah. If yeah, anybody wants to join. Frat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we're getting lit. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got to do to get into this frat? You got to. Burpees uh, or. Literally just go to Saddleback <laughs> College and okay. want to party. Yeah. That's, that's well, about I mean, it. Yeah. I should be honorary. Yeah. Yeah. No, you are. No, you're the president. You're like alumni. Gaucho. Todd's got photos on the wall yeah. somewhere okay. inside. You're like that. Right. What do they call him? Like the house dad of the frat house or whatever. He like comes back and parties with the boys. Yeah. Like this movie, old school, or yeah. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you went to you so went to- I went to Saddleback, and at this point, I'm like, I got overlooked in high school. I, w- I wasn't like bigger than I graduated, like 195, which is like where I'm at now. And I wanted to play D1 football, so I started training my ass off and going to like 24 hour fitness every day, and just started working out hard. And I started getting into my training. Met some guys at the gym that were like helping me with my training. And um, I ended up, long story short, playing two years at Saddleback and got a full scholarship to University of Nevada. Oh, wow. And then when I got to Nevada, um, I had to pick a major. And, <laughs> you know, I got through high school. I didn't do that great in high school. Um, but I, I never took like chemistry or physics or, you know, other than just like your normal biology class and yeah. whatnot. And, um, the only thing that interested me in the catalog for majors at Nevada was uh, the pre-physical therapy major to be a physical therapist. And I was like, okay, that looks awesome. Like I can help people come back from injuries and stuff like that. That's, that sounds great. And then I looked at the coursework and it was like physics, chemistry, exercise, phys, anatomy and physiology, <laughs> neuropsychology, <laughs> everything, biomechanics, statistics, <clears throat> wow. sports medicine, boom, boom, boom. And I was like, shit, like, I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to do this. Like, because, you know, growing up, I kind of had like a lot of the odds against me as many people do, um, you know, broken home, um, a lot of ways I could have, could have gone South. You know, unfortunately I, I lost my brother when he was 15 and I was 13. We got in a car accident and that kind of fucked me up. Um, you know, I still deal with it today, but for a couple of years I was definitely like, just trying to like figure out, you know, what I'm going to be doing and why. And, um, so when I got to Nevada, I'm like, okay, I'm, I, you know, there was this like internal fire me. I want to show people, you know, that I'm not just like a meathead football player. I'm actually smart and I got a lot of potential and I can do this. So I was like driven internally to like, basically for me going back to like my high school and seeing like teachers or coaches and being able to like tell them what I'm doing or show what I'm doing <clears throat> or them knowing like they'll hear about it like I heard you got a scholarship and I heard you you graduated that that was like everything to me and we all need a purpose in life you know and usually you know everyone's kind of chasing a dream and if you got like true passion for something and it and it means a lot to you you'll find a way to get through it so I went to Nevada. I had a great time, played football. Um, the school was so hard for me, but I, I took on that challenge. Like no matter what happens, I'm not going to miss class. Yeah. You I know? heard it's tough to <clears throat> playing college football and doing your studies is probably crazy. Cause it. we hear that from a lot of athletes, especially yeah. football. Cause you got to wake up super early in the morning. You got to train and yeah. you got to go to the gym and then you got to go to class. Football. And it's back to football. Yeah, you'll have meetings like we. I'd have weights at six, linebacker meeting, go to class. Sometimes you'd have a defensive meeting at lunchtime or something. Then you have practice, and then you have post practice meetings, film review. Then you might have dinner. And you got to remember table. your plays because when you you're got to know f- all that stuff plus like wow. and be ready for your midterm next Monday. <laughs> yeah, <second. laughs> well, you know, if you're taking like a science based major like me. Every class not only has lectures, but they have labs. So you got chemistry lab, anatomy lab, physics lab. So you have your lectures twice a week, and then you have a three-hour lab. And you have to orchestrate your whole schedule around your practice and your travel and all that stuff. And Was there ever a time you're like, oh, why did I get myself into this? No. Or you always knew, like, this is what I want to do. I want to get that done. I loved it. Like, I'll I'll be honest. I, I was never like... 
a student um, to that level. And sports always came easy to me. So, like, I just naturally, you know, I'm just not going to be not arrogant, but I was always, like, a good football player. You were and, him. And I always, like, you put me on the football field, like, fucking, like, some came over me, like, I was just, like, unstoppable. Um, and in school, I put that same mindset to my studying. I was like, this is a challenge, and, and I'm going to win. And I'm going to prove to myself that I can do it. And to do it, you couldn't do it half-ass. Just like training, just like anything else in life that you want. Like, if you really want to accomplish something, you got to go all in. And I knew that that meant going to the library every night, too, after studying, um, not missing class. If I was out partying the night before and, like, in Reno, you know, things didn't start getting on until, like, 11 o'clock. So it could be 3 or 4 in the morning before you're done. Like, I'll be at chemistry at 8 a.m. taking notes. God. But um, hung. there was many, <laughs> many nights where I closed that library down. I always close at midnight, and I'd always be, like, you know, one of 10 people left in there. And, you know, when I was in college, we didn't have a really like internet or anything. Like you had to do your research. You had to go find the fucking journal and like Fuck. take your notes. And what's a book? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had to, you had to look up that research and, um, you know, it just, it's one of those things that, um, as I got further into my degree, I started getting better at studying. And so I started being more confident in like my preparation. I knew what I had to do and I knew how I had to study. So I ended up getting through, you know, I, I think I graduated with like a 3-2, 3 GPA from Nevada, which is pretty good for considering I was playing football and yeah. like oh, taking sure. those classes. To get into PT school, I was competing with everyone's getting like 4.0s and honor students. And, and um, you know, I got on the alternate list a couple of times at like USC and because I was applying to like the best schools, I wanted to get the doctor of physical therapy uh, degree. And um, but while I was doing that and not getting in, I became a trainer and I was working at physical therapy clinics. And one day, you know, I was a trainer at this gym and a, there was a pro beach volleyball player out of San Juan. He was talking to me, he said, hey, you know, what do you think I should do to train for volleyball? And, and it just like provoked me like, like I actually don't know. And I was like, you know, again, you can't like go on Instagram and start yeah. putting in hashtag volleyball training. Like <laughs> you had to figure out like how, to, you know, what should you do? And like different than normal training. So I started looking up about training athletes and I found uh, there's a whole organization called the National Strength and Conditioning Association. And they're like the global authority in strength and conditioning. And they I think they started maybe like five years before I came across them. And um they had a certification called Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist. And you had to have a degree to get this. And I'm like, oh, that's dope because I don't want to just get some like stupid little overnight personal trainer certification. Yeah. This one, you have to have a degree. I have a degree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I looked at the, 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 school, the, the, uh, the requirements for the certification and it's like exercise science, a lot of physiology in there, <laughs> a lot of biomechanics. And then it went into all this like sports training, like testing evaluation and strength and power. So while you were playing your football, you started to kind of get into the personal training kind of on the side or? No, this is, this is, okay. This is after. So, so after I graduated Nevada, I came home. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then you started And training. then you started doing the personal training. Yeah. Cause I was applying to graduate school for physical therapy. Okay. okay. So and that was in the waiting period while you were applying. Yeah. I was taking my GREs. And it you must know, have, it must have been kind of soft market because no one was doing a ton of that back then, right? For training, yeah. yeah. Like for athletes, no, no. There was there wasn't at least social media. Too. You had like no, Mark Marinovich in San Juan, and you had you know a couple other local speed trainers, but there was no sports performance training no center specialized around anything. Like um, you know, just some random kind of like speed coaches here and there, but it wasn't like a a career really career yeah. path for anyone unless you were going to be like the strength coach for like a professional team mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when i you know got my certification it put me on a list of certified trainers and lo and behold a few months later a sports training center opens up in irvine uh right down the street from you know where we're at now and they had sports performance physical therapy 
Um, they had it's good timing. a whole gym. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, and they contacted me to see if I would do an internship. Wow. And I was like, all right, yeah, this is my way to get in there. And so I went in to do this internship. And one of the people that was involved with it, Tom Wilson, he was a strength coach for the Anaheim Angels at the time. And so I was kind of working with him and he went to University of Nebraska. And so he he had a lot of knowledge in Nebraska. Husker strength is like one of the most well-known strength and power programs, you know, back in the day. And um, and he used to bring me like over to Anaheim Stadium sometimes to help train some of the angels. And a lot of times they were coming to our facility and training. And at that time, Disney owned the angels and the ducks and the ducks we're looking for a new strength coach and and Tom recommended me to work with their minor league guys for the summer so they had like 12 guys come out and I trained them and I researched the shit out of hockey because I didn't know anything about it <laughs> and uh, awesome. I did really good and while I was training them sometimes like the GM for the team would come over or the president of Disney Sports was coming over and looking and one day Michael Eisner came over he's the CEO of yeah. Disney because Whoa. His son was a goaltender in hockey, and he was just in the group training. He was like a college hockey player. Oh, they, they let him be in the group. That's crazy. And so after that, they offered me to be the head strength and conditioning coach for Anaheim Ducks, and I was 26 and just starting my career. How did that feel? It was, like, unbelievable. Like, I literally... Were you nervous? Yeah, you're Pro young. Too. Probably yeah. surreal at the time. Yeah, it was like, wow, like... You know, I'm all of a sudden going to be in charge of the performance of like multi million dollar athletes yeah. and like traveling with this team. And like, I better know my shit. And, you know, how do you start preparing for that? Uh, you know, researching hockey, reading books. How much, on, how much hockey, like personal strength and conditioning information was yeah. there at the time? I bet <laughs> Not you there was much. like none. You know, there was a couple guys in the industry um, that were kind of, you know, the leading guys, you know, before me. You know, we're similar in age or a little older than me, but Peter Twist, he was the uh, strength and conditioning coach for the Vancouver Canucks, and he wrote a book on training for ice hockey. And I read his book, and it was like, gave me so much insight. Holy grail. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, there's another guy, Mike Michael Boyle. He's from back east in Boston. He has Boyle strength, Mike Boyle strength and conditioning. Everyone in the fitness and performance industry knows who Mike Boyle is. He's, like, the legend. Great guy, and he... You know, I got to meet these guys because when I was on the road traveling uh, at the time, Michael um, was the strength coach for the Boston Bruins. Oh, wow. And so if I went to Vancouver, I met with Peter, you know, Boston or, or wherever there and was. you're how old at this time? I was 26. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fresh. And so, you know, and then talking to the players, you know, when the minor league guys, when I knew I was training them, I got their information. I started calling them and asking them what they've been doing. And sometimes I'd end up talking to their parents. And, you know, when they came in, you had guys like from France, Canada, Czechoslovakia, Russia, a lot of accents. and some guys I couldn't communicate with. <laughs> yeah. So at this point in my career, I started learning, like, I need to learn to communicate without being able to verbally tell them what I want. I need to be a, a, a visual trainer and I have to find a way not only to, to show them what they're doing, but you got to get them to buy in and trust you. And when you get to professional sports, those athletes usually have already had multiple trainers and in many cases they currently have a trainer and they're just doing what the team tells them to do and they're working with you because they kind of have to and it's so, so cool. you know you have a lot of different input from people like you could think okay these this is a great exercise for hockey and i need to do this with all my athletes and then you're gonna have some other guy be like yeah my trainer says if you do that you know you're gonna pull your groin yeah. You know, and then you got to think about it and be like, well, are they right? You know, it's like and a trust thing. Yeah. Or, you know, just what, trust what, sells. Right? What's that? No, I'm just saying trust sells. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's that's the biggest part in my profession of, of being a successful strength and conditioning coach is you got to get people to buy in and, and believe in you and trust that you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. You, and years later you had, cause when I would train at your gym, you'd have professional hockey players all over the place in there. Yeah. I don't remember who they were, but they didn't, most of them didn't speak English. Yeah. They, there, there was a group of like yeah. five guys you're that always would training. rent homes out here in the summer. They, they were from Russia. They were NHL players, but they, for like seven years, every year they 
rented homes out here in Orange County. They did County. some runs with us outside with like the the sleds some and stuff. Big oh, yeah. or what? Yeah, yeah, they were huge. Big Russian guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would train them on the beach. I would train them at the field. Sometimes I've taken them mountain biking, you know, train oh, them in the awesome. gym. I'd train them on the ice. You had this cool uh, like machine where you put the socks over my running shoes and you made the me slide like, board. That thing is yeah. sick. Yeah, I still use that. What's that for? That yeah. would make my hips so sore. And then when I wouldn't be sore, I'd be so like explosive. Yeah. It would I would just feel like, man, like I can just launch quicker. I don't know. Yeah. It's no, for, like, I probably explosive. did. I use a bungee cord yeah. with you on it too. So it yeah. kind of resists you. you. That thing yeah. was nuts. That is crazy. Yeah. yeah so the slide boards, you're like you're pushing side to side. It's like you're skating. Got it. And so from a training standpoint for any athlete, it's good for working on lateral power and agility. But it also teaches you to stay low and be in like an athletic loaded position because if you're standing up straight, you can't do it. Clumsy. So you got to get down low and you got to drive and it works your balance. And I would have like hockey players stick handling golf That's, balls yeah, around yeah, cones yeah. while they're doing it. Oh, I have like, you know, I used to train Lindsay but Davenport for a long time, pro tennis player. I would have her volleying. You know, forehand and backhand volleys on the slide board. And your tennis ball stuff. Remember, you'd throw them around, yeah. like, and I'd have to like catch it in one bounce. Yep. You'd throw one over there and then <laughs> throw one over here, and yeah. I'd like barely was, bounce. Was, was he good at it yeah. or what, Todd? You yeah. Dude, I was yeah. good at it. Yeah. He was good at it. Hey guys. Yes, I'm on a private jet. And none of this would be possible without our sponsor, Zill Media. If you need any social media or any content done or even start a podcast like ours, they are the best in the business. Go to zillmedia.com and mention Basement Talk for a discount on their services. Now let's get back to the episode. But let's get off this fake jet. <laughs> <laughs> Go get back to the episode. What have you not trained? Threw up. But oh, that's a good um, question. You know, at this point... I don't know. I feel like I've trained everything. Batman? Underwater basket weaving? Fencing? No, I, <laughs> wait, yeah, wait, is that, a, is that a... You guys got wait, it. I think I did train a fencer a long time ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> have, actually, have you guys yeah. seen the sport where there's two people in a car and they have to choke each other out? They're yeah, car jitsu. Car jitsu. Car jitsu. Car jitsu. Car jitsu. That's not a, they, that's not yeah. a sport. They, they're like in a seatbelt, passenger and driver. <laughs> no, and they got to like submit each other. Now. Car no, it's not like a sport. I never heard of this, but if anybody out there is in the sport and they need a trainer... I'll figure out Todd's, like, for Todd's like shift to second, then yeah. you grab Todd's him. Todd's like yeah. the seatbelt. Definitely. No, like, they actually do that. They fucking choke each other. Yeah, no, I've seen it. I've seen it. It's wild. <laughs> it is that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. But no, I mean, I've trained like, that's one thing about me is I never like focus on just one sport. Um, even though coming out of college, I played middle linebacker. I had that linebacker mentality. Like you're going to fucking work hard. We're going to get after it. And I was work, trying to, you know, work with football players, but then also I learned like, wow, soccer players are all looking for training and they seem to be more available and they don't really have access to anybody that's really shown them training. Cause usually in football, you got like your high school has a strength program and they have coaches that are trying to help you out. But soccer, they didn't have it. Um, sometimes basketball, baseball for sure. Like, you know, they usually like sit around all practice and don't do much and there's very little like performance training especially in like little league and travel ball like those kids aren't really getting like athletic development you training run foul poles and that's it yeah <laughs> so like you know i mean over time i just started becoming like a specialist in everything because i've trained so many thousands of people over the years that i've kind of walked through these different um situations with everybody and i've had to learn about you know gymnastics i've had to learn about diving i've had to learn about hockey or tennis you know i traveled lindsey davenport and i've been to like the french open and the u.s open and indian wells and all these tournaments where and did that transition go from like the anaheim ducks to like you starting your your own business because you became very successful and it's still called cutting edge right yeah cutting so edge sports training when did you open that or how was that experience I first started like training on my own. This is like three years after I was working with the Ducks. And I was in graduate school too at the time I was working for the Ducks. Okay. But um, at that time, when I was actually hired by the Ducks, I was one of only, I think, 10 strength coaches in the NHL. Like not every team had a Jeez. an NHL team. And like, I, um, you know, I, I did really well with the players. I had a you know great relationship with them. But 
I got off to kind of rocky start with the equipment staff and the athletic, uh, the sports medicine staff, because um, our first trip was to Tokyo, Japan. And so I just, I'm 26. I'm fresh out of college. You've never been to Tokyo before? Never been to Tokyo. I'm still like meathead linebacker, <laughs> you know, but I got some good knowledge inside me, though, uh, about training. I'm confident in myself. And, you know, I've been hired to you know, be the team strength coach, which I took super seriously. And our first road trip was to Tokyo, Japan. It was like game one against the Vancouver Canucks. And, you know, I'm thinking in my head when we land this long flight, what, what am I going to do with the players? Like guys are asking me to like meet them up for a stretch or, or find a gym to work them out in recovery workouts, whatever. And so I'm making plans and I go with certain guys to like work out and go back to the hotel and, uh, you know, the next day, you know, I go to the rink and I walk into like the, like the whole locker room place, like, and we get there before the players and like the equipment guys aren't really talking to me. The, the athletic trainer's not talking to me. They're kind of giving me like the cold, cold shoulder. And I'm just thinking like, what the fuck's going on here? What did so, I like, do? Yeah. So like, you know, that kind of went on for a little bit. And then I finally was like, yo, is something wrong here, fellas? And uh, they're like, yeah, you didn't, uh, you didn't help us unload the plane and, and, and bring the gear to the arena when we landed. You just went to the hotel. And I was just like, like at that point, like a little bit of meathead came out of me. And I was just like, yo, if you fucking need help, ask me. Because this is my first trip. I don't fucking know like yeah. how it goes. You know, and I'm thinking in my head, I've been hired to be the strength coach. Okay, I get it now. You guys think I'm your assistant, and that's probably how it is in the sport now. And, you know, the strength coach helps. Because it's a new job. They probably haven't seen it before and all that stuff. They can take advantage the, of it. There was a strength coach before me. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, the team was pretty new. The Ducks were, but... Was that dude carrying a lot of bags or what? I think so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jeez. And he so, is a water boy. You know, yeah. I'm like, you know, I just busted my ass for my degree. 100%. I busted my ass to get here. You know, yeah, I'll help you out, but that's your fucking job. Yeah. But... Even though I thought that way, as soon as they told me that, I was like going to show them, like, don't ever call me out. Like, I'm not a fucking team player. I'm going to help. So I started just fucking doing everything. And every road trip, and look, I didn't, you know, players that ask, hey, can you meet? I'm like, no, I got to go to the arena first. I started fucking helping these guys out more than being there for the guys, you know, when you get into a city. Mm -hmm. And hockey is a tough sport. Like, you're playing a lot of games on a road trip and, you know, whether it's helping guys stretch, guys that are getting scratched, need to stay in shape, just whatever it is. And so um, I just want to do my best job. But anyway, um, that went on for a couple months and I'm traveling with them. And I'm just like, a lot of times we get to the arena and they're like, and they're bullshitting with the other staff for a couple hours drinking beers. And I'm just like, I'm just fucking wasting time. So I would just get everything done, you know, and I ended up uh, hurting my back. Oh, no way. And, um, yeah, we flew to New York to play the Islanders. And, you know, big, you know, hockey equipment's heavy. You There's got all the, lot all of the players bring all kinds of stick bags and hockey equipment. And you got to wheel it all in, carry it in, and unload it all. And um, I was young, and I was just throwing the bags, and I felt a pop in my back. Ugh. And I was like, fuck. And then I was like, all right, if I say my back's hurt, these guys are going to fucking. Start yapping. Yeah, they're going to, you know. And I was like, so I just try to, like say nothing for a little bit and then finally got to the point where I couldn't like move. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're like, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. So once I actually got to a doctor a couple months later and got an MRI, I had like a 10 millimeter disc bulge and oh it was just God. fucked. So I dealt with that and it, it kind of created tension. For sure. Um, Still have pain there till this day or no? You're yeah. Now? I actually had a two level spine fusion two, two years ago because of it. And I still, I've been in pain my whole life from it. Carrying the bags. Yeah, carrying like, the boats. Send you know, the bill to the equipment staff at Anaheim Ducks, dude. Straight you know, up. it's like the the thing that sucks is they are great guys. Yeah, and I for who they are and and what they you know, if we take that out of the mix, I really enjoyed them and yeah. had a lot of fun with them. But there was a part of me that really, really fucking like has a lot of resentment toward them because. Um, you know, my whole life's been fucking set back. I've been, I've been living in pain forever and I get it. Equipment, strength guy helped the equipment guys, 
And it's not like they meant to like have me get hurt, but it just shows you like, I mean, back in that day, I was making shakes for the guys when they came off the ice. And so I decided, well, when we're on the road, they need to have the same thing. And because I wanted to start bringing a blender and a case full of protein powder and shit, equipment, got, they kind of started bitching, like, we got to bring more shit. And I'm like, well, fuck, if I'm going on the road, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can to, like, help them. And if I need to spin shakes in the locker room on the road, then that's what I'm going to do. Because a lot of times you're, you finish a game late at night, we don't have time to get something to eat somewhere, and we got a game the next day sometimes or whatever. So, mm. yeah, it was just, it, it was some of that. Um, and, you know, for me, it's been one of those things where I'm in a profession where I train athletes and I'm on my feet 12 hours a day, harnessing big athletes, throwing medicine balls, lifting weights. So I've been dealing with this my whole life. And, you know, if I look back on it, it's like sometimes I'm like, you know, I should have like, you know, stood my ground and, 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 and said, fuck that. But when you're young and you see this, you're all of a sudden like strength coach for a professional hockey team. You're trying to like hold it all in and do the right thing um, for the for your career. Um, so anyway, I worked for them for three years and, um, you know, I just kind of dealt with it. But a new GM came in, he hired or he fired the head coach and, you know, they decided to have like one of the trainers become the strength coach or something like the athletic trainer. And I was like, whatever. So it kind of kind of put me in a position where um, I was like, what am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> so I started my own training business and I just started training people. Um, well, the credibility after that was crazy, right? So you helped. Can do, yeah. You can, yeah. You have that. Well, I had a really good relationship with their star player, Paul Correa, who I trained for 13 years and he's a Hall of Famer and he he had his jersey retired for the Anaheim Ducks. And, you know, me and Paul hit it off from day one. The players all must have loved you, though. They saw what you were doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I've i had and still have great relationships with the players and um, that, that I trained. And it was never about the players. It was just, you know, the situation with the strength coaches. You know, I was a little young and inexperienced. You know, they, you know, were just probably used to the strength coach doing this. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't like the way they handled it with me. Like, I felt like they should have just, sat me down or told me at some point, hey, when we go on the road, this is kind of what we expect. If they would have just said, hey, we know you got a job to do as well. Um, so if you could just help us out a little bit and or just let us know if you can help us, that'd be great. I would have been fucking all in. Showed you a little respect. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I guess like. That's probably what sparked you to, to become a good businessman. Oh, well, sure. I, learning I, from all that. Yeah, I, I had to like, well, now it's like, what am I going to do? Because I got a master's degree in kinesiology. <laughs> kinesiology. <laughs> you know, I know about energetics and biomechanics and how to fucking lift weights. But, you What's know, what I do, go get a job at, uh, you, you know, like some other college or, or pro team. But like those jobs aren't easy to get. And a lot of times like college jobs, you're getting, you know, paid like you know, 45, 50,000 a year or something. And you're working like 12 hour days, weekends, traveling. It wasn't like, you know, I wanted to launch into something better. And I, and I had a couple opportunities that could have come up at one point. Um, I even had an offer from the San Antonio Spurs to be their strength coach. Um, but at the time my son was nine years old and I was a single parent divorced from his mom. And I, I would have had to basically leave him Cause it yeah. was going to be a full-time year round job traveling, you know, all, all year, like with their minor league guys and whatnot. And, but anyway, I started my business and then like in 2002, I, um, started an LLC called the cutting edge. Um, and that came from 22 years now, huh? Yeah. That, that came from me trying to think of a name that was different than other names even though that's not too different. Um, but there was like a lot of names out there like evolution sports or impact sports training and, mm. and you know, competitive edge or, uh, you, you know, uh, was it like champions or something? I don't know. And I was just like, the reason cutting edge came out is because to me, I wanted to be on the cutting edge of sports training. Yeah. I always wanted to be like the, the one that's like at the top of the game that's, on it like from the research the training like 
if if someone's doing it, I'm like one of those guys. Like, and and then after a couple of years, um, you know, people are always, you know, saying the cutting edge, and I was like, well, the cutting edge doesn't really say what I am. Yeah. Um, because it was the cutting edge athletic performance enhancement. So I ended up incorporating it as an S corp in California, and I changed it to cutting edge sports training. So it's like, that's what it is. Yeah. And um. And I've been in business ever since 2002, incorporated as an S Corp in California since 2004, and I'm still going. And I That's haven't awesome. stopped. So like, awesome. I've been training fitness, athletes every day. It's like what I do. That's awesome. I, I, have a, I have a different little, I want to switch gears here, but morning workouts or night workouts? You know, if I had my choice, like the morning, you're like fresher, you're like ready to go. Yeah. Um, and you just, it just gets your metabolism going for the rest of the day. So if you're trying to, you know, lose weight or be fit, um, I just feel like you get it out of the way. Cause a lot of times by the end of the day, you're fatigued physically and mentally, and you don't quite have it in you. And plus, if you work out at night, now you kind of stimulate your, your brain to be awake. So it's kind of hard to get to sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally will work out whenever I can. And that's like every day, like I find a way. So in between sessions, you're working out and I'm either, you're, you're demonstrating those. Yeah. So, your session, I'm, so I'm either like doing core workout with one of my clients or a couple clients or constantly, you know, I'm usually active, but yeah. the job truly is more degenerative than it is, you know, building me up. It's, yeah. it's a, it's, it's kind of like digging ditches all day. Overtraining <laughs> you're just a little. Con constantly bending, stooping, lifting, ah. demonstrating, showing kids oh, drills, God. harnessing. So like, you know, training athletes is a lot of work and anyone out there that is a sports trainer, you know, even a fitness trainer is still a lot of work because you're hustling. You're super focused on someone for an hour, hour and a half. Sometimes I'm training people for two hours and you're locked into every single thing that's going on with them. And as soon as that's over, now you're locked into another client. People think it's physical too, yeah. but a lot of mental just oh, yeah. strain because you're you're running the business too. And then you're doing, you know, you're doing everything. And you got to right? give the same attention. To every yeah, client. that was the hardest thing. So I used to have a 14,000 square foot training center in Lake Forest. And I started that thing all on my own, finance the equipment, build it out, you know, That's a got, lot of got equipment leases, you know, and like, um, and, and just went all in on my dream. And nobody had a sports training center like I had back in the day here in Lake Forest. And um, it, it was pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, like while I'm training people, you know, I could be training Mark Sanchez. I could be training Anderson Silva or Lindsey Davenport or Paul Curry, whoever it was. You know, I'm getting, you know, voicemails that like, you know, about business situations and people, you know, complaining about a trainer or like a company that didn't, you know, show up to, you know, do our cleaning or so frustrating. Something, you know, so like I was running the whole gym, the marketing, the accounting. Um, the legal stuff and then training people all day and trying That's to manage a bunch of trainers much. and then managing like all the clients that they're training. And it, it was like, it was really overwhelming. It was, it was awesome because. And I all had, the crazy parents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, Especially I mean, in Orange County. You know, when, when people come to train with me, like they're expecting the best. And I have to make sure that every single session I do, every single day, every single hour, I'm like the best trainer. Like I can't ever Do like parents ever like, like try to like out coach you on the side sitting on the sidelines. I, I've had, there's this one guy, Bredge, and uh, oh. <laughs> he had this he had this kid named Kobe played soccer. And he used to sit there and tell me how his arm action needs. Like, no, I'm just kidding. He probably your dead. dad's a cool. No, he probably did. Your dad was did. super super supportive. He 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 was not like that at all. He uh, just my dad's just a big up. Todd Norman fan. Yeah, you need, he needs some training, that's for sure. He's yeah, got, you know. But I, I, I've <laughs> had, factory. trust me, I've spent a lot of time on calls with parents, and I don't mind it personally because being a father, I know what it's like to have a kid and see him grow up through sports, and you want what the what's best for your kid, and, and you know, if you're going to be paying someone money to mentor them or coach them, um, you know, you should be able to have an open line of communication with them. Um, most of the people I deal with are like respectful of my time and, and people like trust me, you know, but yes, there are times where certain parents, you know, may have either false expectations or they don't understand the process or 
you know, nowadays, you know, even with any client, you know, everyone I'm training, they're going to be like, yeah, I saw on Instagram this drill or this plyometric drill or this core drill or this thing for my rotator cuff. And like, you know, if it's something cool and I, I haven't seen it before, I'll be like, oh, yeah, let's do it. You know, sounds great. Um, but it's like you, you'll get that a lot. And um, my training systems are already so detailed and laid out. And, um, you know, I'm constantly customizing them and updating them. It, it's hard to like keep up with every single drill that you see on Instagram. So if it's a parent like asking about a certain training method or whatever, you know, I just try to explain like what I'm going to do. And, you know, my, my training system overall is focused on athletic development in general. So I'm going to focus on the different components of being an athlete of different components of performance, foot speed, explosion, reaction, acceleration, mobility, conditioning, all those things. And then there's a mental side of it, discipline, commitment, accountability, you know, uh, um, dedication, diet, nutrition. That's, that's a huge factor. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, there's a lot of different factors and, I've just learned over the years how to kind of bring it all together and make it simple. Yeah. Um, I know a ton of science. I can't always speak it as well nowadays because I haven't been buried in the books, but I'm well aware of the concepts. And if I ever need to look up something or research something, I, I know all the science terminology and I know I understand it. Um, so there are a lot of things or supplements out there where I'm just kind of like, well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, that research study is like based on this one little population and they're deriving a lot of, you know, conclusions out of that. And their good marketing plan is making a lot of people think this is the new, yeah. you know, biggest fitness trend or whatever. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just the way it is. It, uh, in some ways I love it because there's so much information out there now and it's obviously helpful to me too. Um, but sometimes it, it does confuse a lot of people nowadays and everybody's, you know, people doesn't know, what they should be doing or shouldn't be doing. But for me, I've been training so many people for so long. Like I already know what you need to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Of course I can throw in a new bell or whistle here or a new drill. What does Zach need to do? Um, Todd, we, give me yeah. the words. I, I can say, it. I think he needs to eat. Get a little I was going to say, he probably system. needs to increase his calorie intake. Luckily, Big a, Todd just hit me up with some supplements, so I'll be yeah. ready to go. <laughs> well, first of all, I, I would need to know what Zach's goals are. Ooh, Zach, what's your goal? More, more bitches? More bitches? No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, oh, shit. I don't know if I can help you with that. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. I don't but need I, no help, I can, Todd. I got I can it. definitely I got pack it. some no muscle trip. on you. Is yeah, there any yeah. gym riz tips we can get? Or like, what do you do yeah. at the gym if you see like that girl, you know, and you're yeah, like, what's damn. A, what's the best like route to go if you see a girl you like Just asking for a friend. Don't annoy her. Don't annoy her. Oh. Yeah, I see a lot of guys in the gyms just like stalk girls. Kobe. And they're in there trying to work out and like girls not just get time. creeped out by it. Yeah. What about like so. a subtle flex from the corner? That's what Kyler does at life. <laughs> like, just like hopes they're looking. Well, I think if you got some guns, <laughs> Maybe. you got some they muscles, you got a yeah, chance. But I got muscles. Yeah. I don't know. You might want to keep the, what's it, the pump cover on. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no, I always keep tar I, tarps like, on. Tarps I have on. to keep the pump cover on. Like, yeah. Kyler no, wears like hoodies at the gym because he's like, yeah. What did you say? He doesn't want to Sam Solik over here. I don't want too many girls. Yeah. Todd, how, how long into a workout, like time wise, can you tell if they're like about it or not? Like if they want to be a pro athlete or if their parents are just making them train so they don't play Fortnite? Um, <laughs> I mean, within five to 10 minutes. Yeah, that's quick. The first time I train someone, I, I, I usually, so that part of my job is understand I'm training all these different sports and I'm training athletes at all different levels of these sports. So I'll have like a 12 year old girl soccer player. I'll have a 17 year old baseball pitcher. I could have a UFC fighter. I could have a football team. I could be training, Moto. you know, motocross racer, you know, and this person could be from France and that person could be a spoiled little kid. And this person could be a kid that's had nothing. Yeah. Um, so the biggest part of being a successful trainer outside of actually your training being legit is connecting with your clients and understanding what makes them tick. And you have to you have to be able to make them want to work with you because if I'm gonna push you into the ground and like challenge you, 
you, you know, you got to want to be there. Now, if you just don't want to be there and this isn't what you want to do, like, um, you won't last training with me. Um, and there's been a, only a few cases. Uh, and, you know, there, there are some, I will say, some kids that I knew didn't really want it to be the athlete that their parents wanted them to be. But they did enjoy come, coming to the gym and training with me. Pushing themselves. And so even though I knew like this isn't their passion or what they want to do as far as like they're not trying to, you know, get into college, they still enjoy like working out and talking to me because a lot of what people are doing is they're talking to me. Yeah. And any trainer will tell you, you know, people just start, you know, barfing at the mouth. Like, you know, kids are going to start talking about tests they just took at school or, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend that just broke up with them or, you know, some athletes going to be, you know, talking about their coach and the situation they're going through or a fitness client could be talking about business problems they're having or problems with their kids. And so all day I'm just constantly going through everybody's like issues it's like a therapy session <laughs> while I'm kicking their ass, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. because first and foremost, I'm always going to make sure I kick your ass the right way. I'm not just trying to like kill people, but sometimes I'm trying to like it make is, sure it's right. Yeah, so <laughs> Kobe a little up a couple times. Yeah. But yeah, like, and you know, sometimes I do feel like I'm in a position where this person doesn't really want it because they don't have the right coach yet, and they haven't been inspired by the right person. Sometimes they need someone like me to train them, make them a little bit more athletic, and say, you know what, I think you actually could could do really well. You made a lot of progress. Like you're getting faster, you're getting more explosive. You know, we put ten more pounds on you, like. And they'll be like, yeah, like, so sometimes you can actually change someone's life, like when they're younger and they don't, they don't think anybody believes in them. Yeah. You know, we all, we all saw, um, like the transformation you did for all the Nelk boys, but especially Kyle, you were a big part of that. So if you guys don't know, Todd was a massive part of that transformation. Like Kyle, a big body. Yeah. Tell us how you. (laughs) Even meeting them for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that process too. Yeah. yeah, crazy. Well, I took a I took a side job a couple of years ago, at Equinox, um, as a personal trainer. One of um, the best gyms, right? Kind of coming out of COVID, had my sports training business. I was in one location, and that closed down, so I had to find somewhere else to train my athletes. And I wasn't really sure how it was going to pan out. And someone suggested I get a job at Equinox; it could be a good opportunity there. So, literally, you know, started there at fifteen bucks an hour, going through their orientation, racking weights, and um, and this was actually like three months after my spine fusion. So I literally oh, wow. was like recovering from spine fusion. It's hobbling. And I'm in there. And a big part of what Equinox teaches you is how to you know, strike up conversations and market yourself and promote yourself. Because in a gym, all these people, they didn't know who I was. Like they didn't know I was like a trainer. I had 25 years experience yeah. and train all these lead athletes. They just think I'm a trainer. Mm-hmm. And I'm usually, you know, pretty modest person. And I'm only going to like boast about myself when I need to, uh, and justify myself. But, um, but my son has been watching Kyle and the Nelk boys since he was in high school. And you guys know my son because you yeah, went to Troy. high school with him. Shout Troy. Out Troy. And when he was a sophomore in high school, he was like, showing me Kyle's videos of when they were going into like target. And moaning in people's ears at Walmart. Well, the, the one I love the <laughs> uh-huh. best is when he went into like Dick's Sporting Goods and he was like selling golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle was so fucking funny. He is. I was caught between, okay, this is bad, but these guys are funny. And then I started seeing Steve will do it, and he's pounding all his vodka, and I'm seeing Troy do that. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, you know, a couple times. Uh, yeah. A couple Steve will do you know, it. He was out, and, you know, and I'm like, I was telling Troy, don't, no. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not going to be good for you, but, um, Anyway, I, I did know about him. So I'm here I am working at Equinox. And one day I see Kyle and Jimmy. And I don't remember if Steiny was there, but I saw Kyle in all this full sand gear. And I'm like, fuck, that dude looks like Kyle. And then I'm like, all right, I need to go say hi to him. I'm going to be that guy because if I can get a selfie with him, my son's going to fucking shit his yeah. pants. Yeah, yeah, was everyone like looking at them? Or was no, there a lot of people I mean, in there? That that equinox is like kind of like an older crowd and Chill. yeah yeah people you know it's kind of like a lot of successful people there and they 
Yeah. People kind of, you know, people say stuff to them, but I mean, everyone's kind of pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So they were coming in and I saw that. I went over, I'm like, bro, you look just like Kyle. Is that you? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, dude, you got to let me take a selfie for my son. Like, he's like, yeah, sure. No problem. Like took a selfie, sent it to Troy. He's like, no fucking way. And then, you know, I went about my job and then I started seeing them coming in and working out and doing their thing. And I was like, all right, I don't know if they have a trainer or if they're following a program and I'm watching what they're doing. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> what were they doing? Yeah. They were actually, I mean, they were doing some decent stuff, like kind of like Tossing circuit the training ball back and forth or what they were like <laughs> doing some weights and then, you know, doing some jumping jacks and, mm. you know, just kind of, you know, at the bench press and, you know, they were doing stuff, but I obviously was thinking, Oh fuck, if I could train these guys, I could like take them to a whole nother level. So how am I going to do this? So like one day, you know, I just started kind of like planting seeds with them. You know, like, um, I have a big hockey background. I found out they're from Toronto and I used to train some guys for the Maple Leafs and just try to, you know, make a little small talk. And, you know, this really is outside my comfort zone because I didn't want to be like that guy that yeah. was kind of like trying to, you know, leech on, on them. And so I'm sure um, they get it a lot too. From yeah. But at people. the same time, like it's I want to train them. I, I yeah. thought the dude's fucking funny as shit and they're here working out and like none of our trainers are training. So I'm like, I need to make a move or someone else is gonna, or, um, you know, if I don't, I'll never know. And there's been times in my career when I had opportunities to approach people and just go for it and I didn't and I regret it and I'm like fuck that was my moment like but in my mind like oh I don't want to be a douchebag or I don't want to be that yeah. guy takes one conversation yeah but at this point I'm like you know what I don't give a fuck worst if, they if, can say is no worst they can say is no and maybe they'll say yes and so after a couple conversations with them I was like like one day I'm like Kyle yo you guys want to get a workout in with me and he's like sure let's do it and I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. And like trying to line it up. I was going out of town the next week with the Mission Vale football team to Hawaii. He was out of town. And like, so it didn't happen until like two weeks later on like, uh, it was on Labor Day. I came in and trained him and it was a great workout. And he's like, hey, can we come, go in tomorrow? Set up an appointment. Next thing I know, I'm training him and Jimmy. And now it's it turned into like six, seven days a week training for like, a year and a half. Wow. Anytime they were here, I was training them. And um, he is the greatest dude. All the guys that I've met with the whole Nelk crew. And um, I started training John Shahidi, their partner that runs Happy Dad and yep. other things that they do. Um, just like the coolest, coolest people I've ever met. And um, um, super into their fitness yeah, and wanting crazy. to get in shape. And when I first you know, met Kyle, he was out of shape. And so was Jimmy. And... You know, I did an assessment on them, took their body composition, took photos, took their girth measurements. I'm like, look, guys, if we're going to do this, I could be great to get these metrics on you now. So down the road, we can look back and you can see your progress. And so start training, they start making progress. And like, you know, it's tough for them because they have all these appearances and, and they, they're selling an alcohol. And a lot of times yeah. people want them to drink and do that. And so um, but Kyle's like one of the most dedicated clients I've ever had. Oh. And actually, he's bringing me out to Miami next week. I was gonna say to film Miami. some content oh, that's awesome. um, because we're starting an online training. Thing. Awesome, super and dude. Yeah, it's called TNM Lifestyle. I love. And it. so wow. it's all about training, nutrition, and mindset. And it's kind of based around this transformation that that Kyle When's and Jimmy that gonna did. When's that going to come out though? Because we don't want to like. It's it's supposed to come out anytime. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, wow. Heard yeah, we first. were going to launch it a little sooner, but there's been a few holdups, but. I'm I'm guessing within the next month. Is that ha, have you been working with Gary as well, Gary Brecca? Because I see him like involved with you guys as with your yeah, guys' stuff. Yeah, I, I met Gary when they brought me out to a UFC fight, um, and at the time that must have been a cool experience too. Yeah, well, at first I didn't know it was him. He's a and crazy scientist. He's yeah, like, he's really an interesting guy. And then once I figure out who he was, because sometimes in person you don't, it doesn't click till later. Yeah, and I. And I was just starting to hear about him, so I didn't know too much about mm -hmm. him. But once I was talking, I was like, oh, this is Gary Brecca. He, he works with Dana White. And and he started talking about stuff. And I met his kids, and they're all, like, awesome people. And, like, oh, that's awesome. so now, like, I see all the stuff he's doing. It's all great stuff. Like, um, 
just the whole vibe ironically around the whole full send crew and happy like they're all about fitness and health and longevity and that's awesome you know it wasn't I think, always like that though right? no. yeah no. it used to be there was a video they came out with yesterday it was on their nelk 2 channel and they were doing their fitness stuff and i think it was kyle or jimmy or someone on the video was like can can you believe it boys like we're promoting fitness now yeah. and he started <laughs> laughing and he's like doing like dumbbell presses or something <laughs> yeah but they were all laughing and they're like Everyone thinks we're like big fitness heads now, which they are, yeah. but it's so good because another guy on the video was like, yeah, they're making other kids want to go out and work out now. For sure. Yeah. So the dope thing about our online training platform, so it's folks around these 120 day transformations, which is 16 weeks. And we're basically targeting three different body types. So one is like the skinny thin guy who wants to pack on muscle and struggles to do it. Wow. So is, you're speaking like yeah. that. You just got so, your first customer. Talking. Full, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Full, on, full on strength program that periodizes over four week phases. And we're also providing like kind of customized nutrition programming for them as well. Oh, wow. So you get a customized uh, training program. You get access to me and other trainers that work with Kyle and, um, and Digital our team. AI Todd. Yeah, <laughs> he, just, he just spawns in your room. Hologram of Todd <laughs> in, in my room. living room. Wait, that was some a hologram. Idea. The hologram yeah. comes up. Yeah, Todd yeah. spawns in your room. Ten burpees, motherfucker. Yeah, right yeah. 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 Todd's got me throwing up virtually. The yeah. AI, yeah. If, you, if you eat a Cheeto, he activates. Yeah. And he'll just spawn he in your room. Put that shit down. <laughs> so if you're the guy that's trouble has trouble your whole life gaining weight, you got a super high metabolism, you're not really sure how you should train and eat. We got a program for you. If you're the overweight guy who's like, you know, has a lot of body fat, hasn't really worked out for a while Yo, and chill. probably need more of a starter <laughs> program. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to do it? All right, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, we got the, yeah, uh, Island. <laughs> you know, we got that program. And then we got a program that's kind of for like the middle guy. Oh, fuck. That's, you know, got some muscle. He's kind of bulky. Um you know, good definition, but still has a little bit too much body fat. Fuck. So he kind of wants to lose some body fat. Fuck. He's got so a category for every basement talk boy. Yeah. 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 We got a for all three. So yeah. no, that's the beautiful Fuck. thing about this training. Why is am like, I the overweight like category? <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucked. He's all looking at me. Yo, you got the pump yeah. cover. They Process don't know. of elimination, dude. Yeah, I should have brought my body fat calipers, huh? Oh, oh that would have been good. I've done it. I've done it at our gym. We did it at Lifetime. I don't know if it's accurate. Zach was... Mine was crazy. Like, I guess, don't know if no, it's no, no, guess, guess what is it, his is. I mean, you'd have to pull up your shirt a little bit if you want to accurate. I mean, I don't want, I don't want to, like, show the ladies uh, what's going damn, on. You got, yeah. like, one hair on your nipple? Yeah. I mean, ninety-six <laughs> percent. he's got a little belly fat. I'm going to guess, like, nine, eight or nine. Dude. Maybe. Yeah, Tell I him. mean, I could see that. But no, it was, I like, three. Know. No, it was three. Dude, you were three like, percent. I don't Yo. think, dude, honestly, it could be three. I, I thought it was five. This guy was three percent body fat. Okay, Mr. 21. The lowest body fat no, I, I ever like 15, took dude. was on this Anaheim Duck player. And he was... A hockey player? Shredded as fuck. Like, oh, my gosh. Ripped. And he good was 4%. Boy. Good, yeah, boy. good boy. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it glitched. Christian's probably... Yeah. I thought it was five. It could have been three. Christian was like yeah. six. That's oh, crazy. Really? I don't Maybe less. Wow. Yeah, but that, you, you could are those like, machines real? Dude, I'm going to start, yeah. work, start working it's out. I'm going to hold your hands out. I don't know how accurate it is. Yeah, no, they can be pretty accurate, but there is variance. There's like prerequisites to those testing. You're not supposed to have... Should I just get shredded? No, you shouldn't. Yeah. Stay fat. Yeah. Should Damn, I? I just lost a customer. No, but it's a commitment. Like, I got to yeah. work my ass you off. You got to be fucking That's disciplined. But I'm not like, I, I won't, I can't half-ass it. Like, I got to go hard with you. See, His, that's the thing with Kyle is like this whole platform is based on not just training, but it's it's based on mindset and locking in and like dialing lifestyle. in. Yeah, it's it's like a lifestyle. It's like, you know, you can still have fun and, and live life, but, you know, you can still take care of your body. Yeah. And, you know, ultimately, I think, you know, nowadays, you know, fitness is huge and being fit is actually like more of like a trend and a con like a f like a, like the gym me? is not Dude, just we'll the gym. It, it's like a Chill. place where people go and like hang out and like meet people. Meet and like, chicks. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, some people can meet them and some people can't. Yeah. But uh -huh. sorry, Kyler. You know, <laughs> I have a I have an interesting topic that we've discussed before. I don't know if we've d done it on the pod, but what do you mm -hmm. think the easiest sport to go pro in is 
Quick, mm. Did I did I say that quickest right? or easiest? The easiest sport to go pro. What is it? I I have mine. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if you guys ever said yours, but I don't know. I did, it's a hard question. I mean, just the word easy yeah. and go pro doesn't, doesn't align with me. Like to get to the highest level of a sport, what so, do you think the or like easiest play, one? Play it out be? like this: like Kyler has n- has had no experience in this sport before, and he's going to start tomorrow. What is going to be the easiest one for him to get to the top quickest? Right. Pickleball, yeah. Pickleball, pickleball, pickleball. That's bad. That was yeah. good. Pickleball is actually pretty tough, dude. Pickleball, I'm fun. really good. Yeah. Pickleball is fun. It's actually a good sport for like athletes to play. Like, yeah, because it works you on your agility. Really my no. knees get off. What's that? You ever play pickleball with Lindsay? Or no, no, they didn't even have pickleball. Yeah, they didn't. Have like, <laughs> it's like a new thing. It's popular. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say mine was fighting though. That might sound crazy, but it's because yeah. if you knock out like. Ten people in a row, you get a you know. They used to call say, you one I'd punch. I'd say motocross. No, it's well, the easiest. Really? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like you just sure. rip a dirt I bike. Just, oh man. Just hop just on. I've trained at the ride pro the bike level. around. A like bit. it's it's never been. <laughs> well, you dirt bikers, it's easy. Anything but like, like you have to be like the best of the best. Yeah. Moto and UFC. What's more dangerous? Say it again. Motocross or UFC? What's more dangerous? Fuck, two dangerous sports. Yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, I would say like in motocross, when people fall and break bones, like they shatter shit. Like There's UFC, more variables. it happens. Sometimes somebody shatters like their humerus or their Shin. tibia on a kick or something. But usually motocross, like like somebody crashes, has a bad crash, they're like done. they're breaking a lot of shit. I, I've um, been out to track where people have died. Which yeah. is just gnarly. You're you're Jesus seeing the Tyler. ambulance. You're like, oh yeah, <laughs> that guy's <laughs> that guy's gone. Yeah, Not which wrong. is, dude. I'm just Not speaking a, a truth. Downer, it's happened dude. a couple times. I mean, I've broken my wrist, <laughs> which isn't like gnarly, but it's it's <laughs> boo hoo, Kyler. No. Shut <laughs> up, dude. Yeah, I would say like, like just general injuries. Like in UFC, obviously they're getting punched, yeah. and they're you know might get like their nose broke. Yeah, or you know something dislocated um but is like traumatic injuries that actually like can well i mean anything can happen in a ufc fight yeah, we all know that true. but i just feel like motocross probably more cross, traumatic injuries in motocross yeah it's, i mean you're you're dealing with heavy motorcycles and jumping off mountains and stuff so dealing with high level athletes like in different sports like a davenport or like an anderson silva what's like a, the biggest similarity in them even though they're in different arenas I'm going to say, like, the ones that I've trained at the best. Um, by the way, are the cameras on? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. I know. He's like, are you guys recording this shit? I know. We're good. We're good. No, we're good. We're we're we should, bro. should we just halftime check out, make sure Fuck. everything's working? No, I mean, we're good. No, we're good. No, we're not, good. you're going to start hitting them burpees. Yeah. Right oh, my. Hey, I'm doing it anyway. I'm He's telling you right anyway. now, guys. Um, I keep my word. Fuck. Yeah, I've, I've been able to, fortunately, work with a lot of top athletes and some of the best of the best. And, and get to see how they operate. And, you know, most of them, it's like the ones at the top, it's like their passion for perfection is what I see. They're trying to perfect every single ounce of their ability. And because at that level, it, that's what matters. And um, they're just trying to, like, make sure that they don't leave any stone uncovered and you know when you're working with those athletes you know you're they're also being com- uh, constantly bombarded by people saying what they should do and what they need to do and Opinions. god forbid you're working with someone and they lose and then all of a sudden people start looking at you like start pointing mm, should the you finger. be training with him but if they win they're like fuck you're the best <laughs> trainer ever like what are you doing with that person so um but yeah overall you know, like Anderson Silva, I trained him when he fought Chael Sonnen the first time. And that was like the biggest fight in UFC history Crazy at the time. Fight, so, yeah. you know, and, and there was a lot of shit talking going on by and Chael Sonnen. That was that, the first one was in Brazil too, right? No, or, the, the one against Chael was in Oakland. That was in Oakland, okay. Yeah, and um, Chael was talking, was talking crazy. all this He was going to bring was, him down and beat the shit out of him. He said they didn't have computers in Brazil. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so hard. I was like, fuck, like... 
It's a lot of this guy's pressure. gonna like try and ground and pound the shit out of Anderson, and he actually did. But then Anderson won because he was in such great shape because I trained him. Yeah, fucking yeah. Shout out to yeah. go. Um, and but anyway, just kidding. <laughs> he's a beast. But that was a back and forth um, fight, though. But Anderson was like, he's just like an amazing person. And I mean, he would come in and he would bow to me like coach. Like he had so much wow. respect for his coaches. That's super cool. And so I was so impressed by that. Like, and he was already at the highest level when you met him. Too, highest so. level. This guy hadn't lost a fight in years. Mm. Like he's just Top like the, the UFC. UFC legend. And he can't. He would come in and bow to me. Coach, how you doing? Like it's crazy. Let's go. What are we doing today? Like, and there were some times where he actually worked with the kids at my training center. He asked me if he could teach the class. Dang. And I even have pictures of him. Like I had like the speed class. There was like 20, 25 kids in this class and Anderson is teaching, came so early sick. to teach the class before I trained him. What a humble dude. <laughs> Imagine yeah, being and, the kid that shows up to speed class though and you yeah. can see Anderson Silva. That's That's yeah, awesome, it was awesome. Dude. And, um, you know, I've had, you know, I've had a lot of my athletes have done like Mark Sanchez when he, you know, USC and New York Jets at the time when he was doing really well, um, like he'd just bring in a bunch of his cards and sign them all. Oh, wow. And he's like, you keep these in your office and give them out to kids, you know, like, that's so cool. You know, like that want them or whatever. Yeah. And, um, but again, like all these people, they're all striving for perfection. They need, and so much is on the line always. And so anytime I'm training them, I have to be super prepared and super focused. Now, back in the day, I used to train Paul Correa, and he was a top player for, for the Anaheim Ducks in, in the NHL. And he was known throughout the NHL as being, like, super, like, hardcore training. And when I started training him, you know, I kind of had to win him over first because if I got him on my good side, I knew, like, the rest of the team would Set. would fall in place. Um, and for many of the years I trained Paul initially, he was so locked into his training and so focused that when he would come into the gym, like he didn't want me talking to anybody. Mm. He just wanted me focused on his workout and his, his like mm. the it's time intense. between his sets and like which leg we're starting on on this exercise and what we're doing. And like when I had my own training center, of course, people would come in all the time and be like, hey, Coach Norman, what's up? Or, Tap you know, they may not realize I'm training Paul and like I'm just kind of like, you know, like yeah. can't talk right now. I'm with the client like. You know, and sometimes people think I'm a dick because, yeah. like, I'd have situation. to blow them off. But, you know, as soon as they That's start crazy. talking to me, because sometimes people in. come up and they just start talking to you. Of course. And I could see Paul, who's standing on the, on the, by the squat rack, knowing, like, his last set's coming up. He needs to be locked in. And he's, like, looking at me, like. And so it taught me how serious some of my clients can be and how professional and, like, serious I need to be with these people if I want to work with them. Yeah. And, um. And I, you know, I'm just anybody I'm, I train, I'm always wired to just be like fully locked in on their training. And especially when I'm working with someone who I know it really matters to them and something's on the line or they're professional and, and, and they could be working with anybody else and they're choosing me right now. Um, I have to meet that expectation and, and if anything, exceed it. So yeah, it's just, uh, training pro athletes is, um, you know, it's it's definitely like been a great experience for me. Um, but honestly, like I love working with young athletes. I w love working with a kid that looks like they have no chance. And then I really get to see if my training works. Yeah. You know, because because taking someone at an elite level and and keeping them there and making them a little better and you know going to their fight or whatever, it's all awesome. Don't get me wrong. Um, those are moments that. I'm super grateful for, and I'm aware that a lot of trainers never get that experience. Um, but, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, when you're working with younger kids, high school, junior high, that don't believe in themselves, haven't had the right coach, don't think they have a chance, their parents are pressuring them or whatever, um, and you can actually, like, change that person's life. Because now I've been doing it so long, like, I see a lot of these kids now and they're like 25, 30 years old and they have kids or whatever, like you guys are older now, you know, settling into, you know, launching new careers and stuff like that. And a lot of times they remember things you said to them. And, and sometimes there's things you said to them that changed the course of their, their life and you didn't even realize it. And now that I've seen it so many times, I do realize it. 
And so I'm very cognizant when I'm training people, you know, not, not just physically and athletically, how can I impact them? It's how mentally can I impact them? And first and foremost, to believe in themselves. And, and that's like the most important thing I've found over any athlete at any level. The best athletes are the ones that are confident and that believe in themselves. And if you don't believe in yourself, you know, no one else is going to believe in you. And truthfully, like in training, that's how I build someone's confidence. Because if you start getting stronger, faster, better shape, and you start jumping higher and realizing that you can actually do a lot of things you couldn't do before, now you start like believing in yourself. And so, you know, training is like a huge, um, can be a huge game changer for the athletes that don't have the natural talent. And, you know, I charge considerably high amount of money for my training nowadays. And like, you know, I don't have any problem charging my price. And, you know, if somebody's not prepared to pay that, you know, not a problem, but I'm only going to really work with people nowadays that can afford me because I know what my value is. And I've worked hard to get here. Yeah, I've spent many years, you know, doing free sessions and complimentary workouts and bending over backwards for people. And I'll still bend over backwards for people and sometimes do things a little extra. Like a lot of times my sessions go longer, much longer, mm -hmm. or, you know, I'll, you know, just cut someone slack here and there. But like, it's taken a long time to get to where I'm at now. And, you know, I am very strategic in my programming and, you know, my um, awareness of their mental state. And I know that even if they don't make it in sports, that a lot of the stuff that I'm going to ingrain in them here in their training is going to carry over into their future career, you know, so. For sure. hundred percent. Yeah. And cool. other than kind of the stuff you said about you going to Miami and launching your business, is there anything else that like we can look out for you doing or, is there, where can people find you? Cause we'll we're going to link everything, everything below. below but yeah. I mean, right now I have my business cutting edge sports training and that's cutting edge athletics.com is my website on Instagram. My main sites, uh, T Norman 36. That was my college football number 36. Um, I'm also the director of a new, uh, health and wellness center in Aliso VO called smart health and wellness. Super cool. And this is a pretty good gig. Um, I'm excited about, um, it's a clinic where there's orthopedic surgeons there, and we also have physical therapy department, but we also have uh, like massage, acupuncture, cryotherapy, hyperbaric chamber, IV drip, um, active release therapy. We have stretch therapy, compression, and you know we do cupping and laser treatment, and we have red light therapy. So it's it's like this place where you know you could go see the doctor for your shoulder. And then you might have to do therapy and then you might get some of our wellness services to help you recover. You might also work with one of the trainers and we're all integrated and in, in communicating wow, with each recovery other. Recovery heaven. Yeah. So that's like a new thing. That's smarthealthwellness.com. Um, and I'm definitely getting, you know, I'm 52 and actually next week uh, I'll be 53. Kobe, it's so, your, your birthday my too, My birthday right? is on Sunday, yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Dang. That's April, March 31st. March 31st. Yeah, my birthday is April 8th. Oh, Happy sweet. birthday, dude. Happy birthday, Happy birthday too. Birthday. Yeah, so I'm going to be 53, and obviously getting older, you know, you start to feel what it's like to be older, and you start thinking about your quality of life and, you know, and how people my age exercise and what we, you know, what inspires us now to exercise and stay fit and and so this clinic is definitely kind of like on the longevity kick and kind of along the Gary Brecka stuff. And, cool. That's awesome. And a lot of the stuff that people are, you know, well, what kind of water should you be drinking? And, you know, what kind of, you know, amino acids should you be taking? But for me, you know, it's a lot of assessment. We have a DEXA scan um, for doing like body composition. It's like an x-ray of the body, you know. So, I mean, those are the things I'm doing and definitely – you know, with Kyle and starting this online training thing. It's if exciting. You, if, you, if anybody follows so like awesome. the Nelk Boys. You have a program for all of us. So yeah. we're going to dial in. Yeah. You guys should check that out. It's <laughs> called. You'll be jacked the next time you're on this set. Yeah. It'll be huge. Oh, you yeah. better be. Yeah. Oh, I got yeah. you. You won't. Yeah. You won't. A couple mean, hundred burpees later. But yeah, I mean, is, is there anything else that you guys no, uh, I mean, haven't I had like one, touched one on or? I mean, I had one more thing. Like, have you ever trained Diddy? Who? P. Diddy? No. 
Oh, <laughs> that, that was a long pause. Todd. Shut no. 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 Shut yeah, up. let's not go there. No, no. Yeah. but <laughs> nothing to do with him. Thank you yeah. for coming on. We yeah. appreciate Dude, it. Let's go. No, yeah. so thank awesome. you guys Thanks for that having was me. Yeah. Yeah. Got thank you guys Dude. for watching. Todd is 100%. He's the best trainer in the world. 100. He's trained me when I played professional soccer. He is the best. There's nobody that you're going to get better info from. We're so on if, a part two as well. Yeah, if I you guys want to train with Todd, Todd again. Um, or if you guys want to see us or train with Todd, three. I'll bring the cameras out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, that would be sick. Thank yeah, you. come to the gym and, and film it. And we'll we do should like do a, a vlog yeah. at the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. Do Todd put us through the ring. That would be yeah. awesome. That would be cool. But I'm down. Todd, All right, boys, thank I'm you. ready. Thank you. Let's go. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Hope you guys are having a good Monday. 90% bail. Sub. Subscribe and we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Oh, I gotta take my keys out. Keep going. Yeah, I don't even know. I'm creasing my Air Forces. Todd, how, how, how's the quality of his burpees right now? Right now they're all right. You know. All right. Getting sloppier by the minute. He's tired already. There's no way. You gotta hit that chest though. Yeah. In the hips. Don't sweat in the cashmere, Kyler. That, sure. that one doesn't count. <laughs> no, that one doesn't count either. Your chest didn't hit. What? You gotta hit it. There I got a big chest, dude. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's hitting. Keep going, Kyler. Let's at least get him to sweat oh. out some of the gel. Yeah, I don't know that one. <laughs> Dang, dude. That was like 17, 18. 17, 18. You know, we took a few away. That, <laughs> 80 more, Kyler. If it wasn't a sauna in here, <laughs> I'm dizzy. Todd, do you approve? <laughs> um, I'm just. I'm just glad that everything's working. Yeah, yeah, the, the camera equipment's, equipment's working. We <laughs> actually weren't recording. No. <laughs> Say what it be, I know the king. Follow his lead, repeat that to me. I know they lurking, this serpent, this circling, but I never worry, cause he got the keys. He let it bleed, never put me on the freeze. Just look at how you spin it to me. It'll be out of right after I seek. You can't make the promise unless you the king. Jay with a baby, I am what he made me. No, you cannot shame me, so it's for the birds. Buy for a price, you ain't know what it's worth. He not letting go like his grandma's purse.